On tonight's episode of Locked On Lightning, the Bolts are in Vegas. Can they continue their way, winning ways and bring that winning streak to four? We're breaking it all down with another face back in the lineup coming up on tonight's episode of Locked On Lightning. Your Locked On Lightning, your daily podcast on the Tampa Bay Lightning. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. And welcome to another episode of Locked On Lightning, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. I'm your host, Adam Danker. Thank you for joining us on this episode of Locked On Lightning. On today's episode, we're talking about the Lightning are in Vegas taking on the Golden Knights. Can they extend that winning streak to four? Tanner Janot is back in the lineup. What does he add to this lineup? Where does he where is he going to be in the lineup? What can we expect from him? as well as we're wrapping things up with some listener questions. But before we get into all that, I just want to remind you that today's episode is brought to you by Sleeper. Download the Sleeper app and use promo code Locked on NHL to get up to $100 match on your first deposit. Terms and conditions apply. See Sleeper's terms of use for details. And as always, I want to remind you, go ahead and subscribe to the podcast. Give us a follow wherever podcasts are distributed in audio form. We're also available on YouTube. Go ahead and subscribe to our channel there. Hit that notification bell so as soon as the new episode drops, you'll be notified. And drop a comment below because there is some stuff, obviously, as there always is here on Locked on Lightning to be spoken about. And right now we're talking about tonight's game against the Vegas Golden Knights. And as if you've been a listener for at least the past week, you know that... I've been very amped up for this game because this is a game within the stretch, really the last part of this big stretch in which I think that really are all, well, going into it, were statement games for the Lightning measuring stick uh, games, if you want to call them that, for the Tampa Bay Lightning because, you know, we weren't exactly sure what this team was where they're going to go in terms of you know they've been kind of bouncing in and out of the wild card discussion over the last couple of months they've been in the top three of the division and it's it's just been this this hopscotch of standings positions uh for the lightning uh since then and the Lightning will go into this game playing against, in my opinion, one of the best teams in the league. And it's it's funny saying that out loud because you look at these two teams and their, their records are pretty much identical, you know, give or take those, those overtime losses. But... It's funny saying that because I don't think some people view the Lightning within that same group of very good teams or at least contenders as they view the Golden Knights. And I can't really speak for Golden Knight fans, but from the outside looking in, this team is very, very good. This team is a team that added some pieces at the... the, the trade deadline and in my opinion have as good of a chance as anybody to win the Stanley cup, especially when not only the fact that they are the defending champions, but also the fact that they have a phenomenal goaltender uh, in net for them in eight, uh, Aiden Hill, uh, who really just has impressed me uh, over the last really year uh, from from that playoff run that they had last year. And, and on the other side of that, they got Logan Thompson. And that's the thing that's pretty dangerous about this team, you know, just before we get into what enta- what's entailed for this game. That's the thing that really, really um, jumps out to me when I look at this Golden Knights team 
is either of their goaltenders could could beat you on any given night and look like uh, a Vezina Trophy candidate. Obviously, Aiden Hills considered the top dog out of the two. Um, but Logan Thompson, in my opinion, is just as dangerous in that to to make your night as miserable as possible. Uh, when you look at this team, really, they've been rolling uh, over their last five games scoring wise. Uh, they've been just been doing a good job of, of, of really staying in that that really that that race in the West. You know, you have Nashville who's playing. Uh, the San Jose Sar- Sharks, the Lightning will see them in a couple of nights. Right now, the Vegas Golden Knights sit at 79 points out in the second wild card spot in the West. Three points behind the Nashville Predators. And they're a little bit, you know, their their last 10 doesn't necessarily reflect how well I think this team has been playing as a whole. Uh, four, five, and one with a win streak of one. Whereas, obviously, we all know the Lightning are just rolling as of late, and this is a good opportunity to really boost your morale more. If you want to, if you could even get any higher at this point, because the Lightning they're coming off of wins against the Flyers, coming off wins against the Panthers coming off wins against the Rangers, and, and now you have another chance to, to knock off another top team where it, it just seems as everything is going the Lightning's way, and, and really that's really has been the story. Uh, but, you know, you still got to play the games. You still got to go out there and play against top players, and, and the guy that really sticks out to me for Vegas that's really going to be a pain in the butt tonight is 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 Jonathan Marchelson. I, I mean, all Lightning fans should be familiar with him. He was part of those Panthers teams in the past. He has five goals in his last five games. Uh, what else can you really say about him? 37 goals on the year, uh, 58 points on the year. Jack Eichel, 21 goals on the year. I mean, there's there's really not a guy on this team uh, except for maybe one or two guys, especially that fourth line, uh, that can't go out there and 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 really make your life your your life a miserable hell for for 60 minutes and the thing about this game also that I will be pretty interesting to watch because it'll you know as much as much as we're happy with Matt Dumbo as much as we're happy with Anthony Duclair obviously the I think everybody was in agreement in Bolts Nation that we wanted Noah Hannafin and Vegas beat him beat everybody to the punch and he is now in that first line with Nicholas Haig and it's going to be interesting to see what you got out there, what you could have had. And I say that the Lightning, that 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 will motivate the Lightning to play even better if, if there's even any other reason as to why they need to go out there and play better other than the fact that you want to continue your winning streak and go into this West Coast, West Coast trip or start this West Coast trip uh, with a bang. And and the Lightning have played, obviously, the the Vegas Golden Knights before this year. They they know what to expect to a certain extent. This team has changed a little bit, obviously, at the deadline. But at the same time, you're coming off a win against them in December. And that's something that really, regardless of how long ago it is, you're, you're playing against a very good team. And the fact that you already have a win under your belt, um, that says something. And I think mentally... Uh, that will help you going into this game. I firmly believe that we will see a goaltender game. I also firmly believe that we will see uh, an early start once again from the Tampa Bay Lightning coming from Nikita Kucherov or or even Braden Point. Uh, those two guys obviously have been playing phenomenal lately. I expect to have Anthony Duclair have his fingerprints all over this game. Uh, I expect the the Lightning defenseman to get involved early on. Uh, especially, especially uh, Victor Hedman and Darren Radish in this one. So, let me know in the comments what what you think. I mean, I I think that we're gonna see more big saves from Vasilevsky. I think it's gonna be a close game. Like I said, um, both goaltenders are gonna make big saves in this one, and I think that the Lightning are gonna come out on top. I will say four. 
to three, maybe five, three, if you want to count an empty netter. So let me know in the comments below what where your predictions are with that or, you know, if you're listening or watching this uh, by the time the game is over, let me know what your predictions were pregame and how they differed, obviously, during the game and what surprised you the most. So coming up in just a little bit, we're going to talk about Tanner Janot. He's back in action tonight after missing a month. Uh, we're going to talk about where he fits into the Lightning's plans, not only in this game, but going forward for the remainder of the season. But before we get into any of that, I just want to bring up one of our sponsors, our first sponsor of today's show, and that is our friends over at the Sleeper app. Now we are past the halfway point of the season, Lightning fans. We're on a three-game winning streak, looking for four, and the Lightning are fully in the playoff hunt. But guess what? Regardless of where they are in the current standings, I want to remind you that you could win big by playing Daily Fantasy Hockey on Sleeper, the official Daily Fantasy app of the Locked On NHL Network. Sleeper is our number one choice for Daily Fantasy Sports and especially Daily Fantasy Hockey because with Sleeper, you could win 100 times your cash in Daily Fantasy Hockey Contest. All you have to do is pick guys like Anthony Duclair and Nikita Kucherov to record more or less than their Sleeper projections for things like goals, assists, saves, plus minuses, and more in a given game. So go to go to sleeper.com, use the promo code locked on NHL, and you'll get up to a hundred dollars match on your first deposit. Terms and conditions apply. That's code locked on NHL. See sleepers terms of use for details and locational availability. So as always, I want to thank you all for making us your first listen of the day. If you haven't already done so, please go ahead and subscribe to the podcast. Give us a follow wherever podcasts are distributed in audio form. We're also available on YouTube, so go ahead, subscribe to the channel there, hit that notification bell, so as soon as the new episode drops, you'll be notified, and you can drop a comment below, whether it be uh, a question, uh, a regular thought, you know, about this team, you know, don't don't ask me, like I had a listener actually reach out to me on Twitter, ask me what I think about the whole Kate Middleton photo uh, controversy in, in England, as I don't care, and I don't know who that is, so... <laughs> Uh, let me know uh, what's on your mind, Lightning fans. So we're talking about Tanner Janot. He's back in action. Looks like he's been pining and, and ready to go, uh, as I'm sure most guys would after missing a month. And believe it or not, I mean, this team has really changed a ton, in my opinion, since he's been gone. Um, obviously, the two additions... Uh, Anthony Duclair and Matt Dumba. And I also feel like not only with those additions, but just the mindset, I feel like a month ago, we were kind of just wondering, is this team going to make the playoffs? And now we're kind of looking at the sky is the limit for this team. Uh, they've, they've beat three very good teams, possibly going to beat a fourth tonight. Uh, going on a West Coast trip, coming back home, and facing some very formidable foes. Uh, and you got to ask yourself, with a guy coming back in the lineup, where does he fit into the equation? Because, like I said, this team is in a different headspace now. And, you know, this actually goes into one of the questions that I'll answer later, but I'll re-answer that. That's perfectly fine. Um, but, but I think... You, you got to slide him into the fourth spot. I mean, there's really no room for him above the fourth line. Uh, what we should expect out, out of this guy is really he's going to go out and just play like a fourth liner, and that's just he is just going to grind the, the opposing team down as much as possible, get into the thick of it, do the little things as that you would really expect out of a fourth liner. Uh, he's going to be playing alongside Luke Lindenning and Tyler Mott. And those guys, like I said, are really going to be responsible for taking care of the puck, um, defensive stops here and there, as well as just really wearing down the other team. Um, kind of what we've seen in years past with past Lightning teams that have had very good fourth-line players. Uh, one player that comes to mind and will always come to mind when I think of the fourth line was Luke Shen. Uh, you know, he, he also played defenseman as well. Uh, but you know, he was one of those guys that he was just so 
solid on both sides of the ice. Obviously not a big time scorer, but you know, not a guy that, you know, is completely um unable to to do things with the puck. Uh he was able to puck handle. Um and and that's really what you got to do as a fourth liner. And that's what I expect out of Tanner to know. Um I think that really at this point in time going forward, um we we all need to forget what he was traded for. What what was given up for him. And because at the end of the day, you know, we could be upset with how he plays if he's not performing a certain way. But at the same time, he didn't, you know, we all knew that he was never worth anything remotely close to what was given up for him. Uh, we just got to look at him as a regular hockey, hockey player, a guy that could play on the fourth line. And if he's overperforming, maybe even the third line. But I'm not going to hold out hope or, or even remotely think. Uh, for one second that he is going to be anything above a fourth line forward and and really lightning fans should feel the same way there as well um, when you look at what we see from the third line um, the only player that could possibly go down to the third line is Connor Sherry and that's really all I could really you know think about is him going down to the third line, but at the same time, he's not that kind of player. So the Lightning are kind of stuck with him being on that third line with Esamont and Paul, and and really that's something that we're all going to have to deal with. Uh, Jano is a player that, you know, like I said, if he overperforms, maybe we could discuss or have the conversation of him going to the third line, but the chances of that are really s slim to none, if we're being quite honest here. And, and I think the way this team is playing, especially if they continue to play this way, and if Janot does show some promise going forward, I still think as, as much as, like I just said, maybe we could have the conversation. This late in the season, so close to the playoffs, and especially with the time that he is lost, because a month is a big, time, is a big chunk of time, you leave him on that fourth line. Just whatever's working for him, do not mess with it. And I know that Cooper is probably going to want to do that, but you got to fight those those intrusive thoughts, Coop. Uh, so, you know, that that's really what I think out of Tanner Janot. You know, I don't see any really explosive performance coming from him. I don't really see much of really anything coming from him other than he needs to do the little things. And I think that he can bring enough to the table uh, to do the little things. So let me know in the comments below how you feel. I mean, I don't really see him adding a whole ton more other than another big body on the ice, which is a great thing. Uh, so which I think at the end of the day, I think we could all, uh, agree that is something that you would need especially down the stretch against some of the opponents that will be coming up so let me know in the comments below how you feel about him being back on the ice and coming up in just a little bit we're going to talk about uh well not really talk about we're going to answer some listener questions um some of you like i said reached out to me on twitter some of you reached out to me on youtube we picked up the best ones that we could find uh, so coming up, we'll do that. But first, we're going to talk about our last sponsor of the day, and that is our friends over at Robinhood. Now, did you know that even if you have a 401k for a retirement, you could still have an IRA? Well, Robinhood has the only IRA that gives you a 3% boost on every dollar you contribute when you subscribe to Robinhood Gold. But get this, now through April 30th, Robinhood is even boosting every single dollar you transfer in from other retirement accounts with a 3% match. That's right, no cap on the 3% match. Robinhood Gold gets you the most for your retirement thanks to their IRA with a 3% match. This offer is good through April 30th. Get started at Robinhood.com slash boost. Subscription fees apply. And now for some legal info, claim as of quarter one, 2024, validated by Radius Global Market Research. So one last time, I want to thank you all for making us your first listen of the day. If you haven't already done so, please go ahead and subscribe to the show. Give us a follow wherever podcasts are distributed 
in audio form. We're also available on YouTube, so go ahead and subscribe to the channel there. Hit the thumbs up button. Uh, it really helps the show grow more and reach more people. And, you know, it's all thanks to you guys. I mean, we've grown quite a bit over the last couple of months, and it's I can't believe the enthusiasm. And you've really done a phenomenal job uh, communicating your thoughts to me. Uh, I remember the days when we started some videos and it was maybe one or two comments if we were lucky. And now everybody's chiming in and I love it. And that's why I asked the other day if we could get some some questions rolling in. And a lot of you obliged. A lot of you reached out to me on Twitter. A lot of you reached out to me on YouTube as well. And so I just picked out two questions because I feel like I was going to go long on these, but continue bringing in those questions, continue asking them. Uh, like I said, if you prefer to comment on the videos below, if or if you prefer to uh, reach out to me on Twitter at Danky Dank, E N K Y D 8 N K, uh, go ahead and you can message me uh, if you don't want anybody else knowing it's you or you know, you're just feeling shy. So <clears throat> somebody reached out with an interesting question, and, and why don't I just go to the one that uh, that was talking about Tanner Janelle, just so we could get that one out of the way. Not saying that it's not important, but, you know, we kind of already spoke about it. But somebody reached out and said, what impact do you think Tanner Janelle adds when he is back in the lineup? Feels forever since he has played. It's like adding a new player. And you hit the nail right on the head there, and I kind of alluded it to it just now when we were talking about Tanner Janelle being back. Um it does feel like a new player. Like I said, it's been over a month and you're essentially are adding a new player because this team, I think, is in a different mindset. They're in a different place. Um, when Jano came out of the lineup, we were kind of all asking ourselves because the Lightning were not playing well. And if they at times if they were playing well, it wasn't for long or consistently. So, you know, we were all kind of wondering is this team going to make the playoffs? And if they do, is it even worth it? Um, are they going to be sellers at the trade deadline? Uh, are they going to do much of anything at the deadline? And that's what that was. Obviously, now what we have now is a totally different mindset. And it's going to take him a while to to get acclimated, I think. You know, because he is essentially walking into a new environment on the ice in games. Uh, which is why I also said before, I, I firmly believe that, you know, even if he does play well, whether it be scoring goals or, you know, just playing in a way to where it could warrant a move up in the in the in the lines. I think everybody could agree this isn't exactly an out of the box opinion, but I think we could all agree that the best thing, the best course of action would be to just keep him on that fourth line, uh, because really his role going forward, even if he is putting up points and he's scoring goals. Uh, his role is going to be really just be that, that, that sandpaper that we, you always look for down the stretch that, that player that's really going to just bottle up uh, opposing teams, especially when they try to be sneaky and they roll out their first line against your fourth line. And, and that's the guy you need. And, and he's going to be the guy who's going to go out there and somewhat be somewhat of the enforcer. Uh, Mikey Asimont, I, I really love seeing him go nuts um on opposing teams and and I and I really just do in my, admire the the enthusiasm and, and and the ferocity that comes from 23 but I I will say this and I'm not taking anything away from him uh some of the guys usually that he's going after are a lot bigger than he is and I just especially at this point in the season I don't want any anybody getting hurt because they were they were they were outmatched they're outsized and an altercation on the ice so uh that's kind of part of the reason there too you know you're gonna have Jano go out there and you know even though he just got he just came back from missing a month he's gonna go out there and have to bust some heads if he needs to and and I think that we could all agree him and Dumbo are gonna have that shared responsibility but great question um because it it, it does it, it does raise a question uh, raise the question for this team. You know, having a guy out, you make a lot of t make a lot of some moves here and there. Uh, you bring in new players, and they're really playing well, and it does shake up the the dynamic almost. 
to where the guy comes back from injury and it's kind of a different team for him. Uh, so moving on to another question to wrap things up. I know this has been a little bit of a short mail sec, uh, session, but you know, I, it, it's, we're spending a lot of time on this. This is what happens. I mean, I would, I would love to have a whole episode on, on really the, the questions that you guys give me. Um, so someone else asked, do you think Hagel should stay on the first line or do Claire should be there or put to Claire where it's not working with Hagel on the first or when it's not working with Hagel on the first line? I think that that's going to be something that is going to be changed around quite a bit. And it's not just going to be based off of off of performance. I think it's going to be matchups. I think it's going to be also where how other team, how other players are are performing at that time. It's not going to be I don't think so much necessarily dependent on where Duclair or how Hagel or Duclair are going to be doing. I think it's going to be more dependent on um do we need to get points started? Is Cooch being bottled up? Uh how Sorelli and Stamkos doing? I think it's really going to be kind of a a night to night basis kind of thing as of now what we saw the last couple of games I really like Hagel with Sorelli and Stamkos it kind of it allows Sorelli to have a lot more space uh it gives Stamkos a lot of space to work with um he's really been playing well and he's he's really been doing a lot of good things um even though he's he he scored two in his last game and and obviously they were both from you know normal normal sides on the ice i i still think hagel is really the reason for that um to where if you have if you were to have like a stamkos with kucherov it's kind of a little bit of a different thing because then you know kucherov would be more likely to pass to a a stamkos rather than off to a duclair or a, a hagel so i think cooch and duclair are somewhat kind of the same player um in the regard that they could kind of play anywhere on the ice. Hagel, I feel like, is just more of a traditional winger, um, but at the same time can play down low if he needs to. I, I feel like Duclair, though, kind of that's where he edges uh, Hagel. He, he's able to kind of just do a little bit of everything and compliment Kucherov, and I think that's more so going to be the default line that you're going to see. So... My answer is really more so it's dependent on how everybody else is playing, how the games are going at that point in time. And and I think that whether you want to have Hagel point coach or Duclair point in coach and then have the other on the second line, I don't think there's no wrong answer for that. And I, and I th think that that is going to be something, like I said, that's going to be played around quite a bit with uh, down the stretch, especially in the playoffs when they're having maybe some tough go of it on some sequences or in some games. So um, some great questions. I also saw that I weren't be able, I wasn't able to get to, but um, keep those questions rolling in, whether it be about current games, matchups, uh, predictions, I'm all for it. I'll answer it. Like I said, as long as it pertains to lightning hockey and not other, <laughs> other things like, what's going on with the royal family in England. Uh, I actually had to look that up because I did not know who Kate Middleton was. So, yeah, uh, let me know in the comments below how you feel about this Vegas game. Let me know how you feel about Janot being back. Let me know how you feel about lineups. Uh, do you agree? Do you think Duclair on the first line or Hagel? There's really no wrong answer there. Um, or do you disagree with all that, as I love to disagree with all of you as well? Uh, and we'll be back tomorrow to talk about this game as well as the upcoming games on the West Coast. So that's been it for this episode of Locked On Lightning, part of Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. I'm your host, Adam Danker. I'll talk to you in the next one.